I thought just for a bit of a change of pace, we could look at one of the classic algorithms, right? Uh, binary search. Um, binary search is something you learn about perhaps slightly earlier in your career, maybe as you know, an undergraduate or maybe even you know, in school. Um, but it's super important and I think also really interesting because it illustrates some of the things you need to think about as a software developer about how to make things faster and how to use things appropriately. So that's what we're going to look at today. All right, so let's imagine we have some boxes, right? So it's like deal or no deal, uh, sort of like that, but that Vinaj is going to break down pretty quickly. So I'm going to draw some boxes. I could have pre-drawn these, but where would be the fun in that? Now, you don't know what numbers are in these boxes. It could be any number on Earth. Right? Any number on Earth, is that a thing? Any number, but we do know they're in order. So the lowest number is here, and the highest number is over here. Let's say they're introduced just for the sake of me not giving myself a headache. Right? Now, I want you to find out if the number 17 is in one of these boxes. That's the thing you need to do. This is what binary search is for, but just searching in general, right? So maybe you've got a database with a bunch of IDs and you need to look up a specific person's ID, or you need to find out anyone who's born on a certain date, right? Looking through data to find something is very, very common. This is just one way of doing it. So that's the rules, right? The, the, the boxes are ordered. Mm -hmm. How do we find this as quickly as possible? The naive approach will be we start on the left, right? Let's just, just open this box. Let's not do anything clever. Open the first box. The first box is two. So it's not 17, so we've failed badly, but we are at least slightly closer to the goal, right? because now we only have this many boxes to open. So let's think about that. How much easier have we made this problem? Uh, well, it was, what was it, eight boxes you've made? Yeah, it? yeah whatever. Seven thing. boxes now, right? We've made it one box easier. One, one box. It's not trivial, right? So if we, the best case from now is 17's here. We open the box, 17, job done, right? The worst case is we look through all of these boxes one at a time and 17 isn't in there, right? Or it's right at the end or something like this. I think I'd divide and conquer. I'd go I somewhere think, in a minute. Yeah, I think you should divide and conquer, right? So if we know them in order, we can start looking at a bit like you would look through a phone book, right? You'd open a phone book. You don't open a phone book on the first page and start, come on. I mean, I know their, their surname begins with Z, but I've started, so I'm going to finish this, right? So let's open up a box around here, right in the middle. I've chosen an even number of boxes, but so let's just sort of do this one, right? And, and that, okay, so we open this up and it's not 17. Let's say it's 16, which is awkward, but sure. Okay, so now what have we learned? How much easier have we made this problem? Well, we know now that given this is in order, that 17 cannot appear here and here, right? Let's presume we haven't opened two. It can't appear here either. It has to be in one of these or not in the, in the set of boxes at all. So how much easier is our problem? You've halved it. Right? I've halved our problem, yeah? But our problem is double as easy you know, in some, in some sense. Um, so now, well, let's fall back to our rubbish algorithm. We'll just open this one and then this one and this one and this one. Or we can repeat this process. That would be much better. So the 17, you would assume it is going to be the next one, less as another 16. That's true. Actually, 16 is a terrible, terrible example for that reason. Let's make that 10, right? Fixed, fixed. Um, delete all that bit of video, right? This is 10, so we don't know now. <laughs> no. the, point, the point is we're trying to make a general algorithm, right? We don't know what this number is. All we know is, 17 was bigger than it, so now we're in this half, yeah? So we jump halfway, so let's say this one, right? And we say, okay, is this bigger or smaller than 17? Well, it's 104. So we now need to go to this half, right? But it's, and we're halving every time. We're, we're halving our problem every time. And we look in here, is it 17? And no, let's say it's 16. Oh, 16's come back. And so no, 17 isn't in this set of boxes. Now, you know, you might be thinking I should have done this ahead of time and then, you know, cut my example better. Um, but the, the point is that we can make this much, much easier by divide and conquering. Right? If we know these are in order, which to be fair is a big, a big ask sometimes, depending on the data, we can zero in on our, um, on our target number as quickly as possible. So how much easier is this? Well, what was the running time for the linear search, which is just going like this? Right? Well, it's going to take exactly how long the number of boxes is, right? Or, you know, we might get lucky halfway, we might not. But, you know, in the worst case, it's going to need all of the boxes to be searched, and we're not going to find the number we're after. So we call that O of N, right? So that's saying, but roughly speaking, the amount of time a linear search will take is directly related to how many items we have. Right? Now, this is not very many items, but if you've got gigabytes worth of data, that's a lot of searching to do. So how much easier is this 
when we're doing binary search. So we're dividing by two, and then we're dividing by two again, and then we're dividing by two again. Well, actually, it's O log to base two of N. And what that's basically saying is that as N increases, our problem doesn't increase at the same rate, right? If N doubles, our problem only gets one harder. So suppose we have a billion numbers, right, and it's this hard. If we have two billion numbers, we just have one extra step because we have to do that first divide to get down to a billion numbers, right? So it's so much more efficient and it scales so much better. Scaling really, I think, in these kind of algorithms is what's important. It doesn't matter how long this takes for two numbers, right? Because you just look at them. It's, it's, it's not a huge deal. But when you've got billions or, 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 you know, even more of numbers that you've got to look through, being able to do an algorithm like this is going to be much, much better. Right. Um, so, how would we program something like this? Well, what we need to know is, well, you need to be able to basically be able to calculate the midpoint of where we are. Right. And so, the first time, that's easy, because it's just the length of this array divided by two. Right. But actually, we want to be able to generalize this a little bit. So, it would be helpful if we have a couple of variables that, uh, um, that determine where we are. So, let me draw out some more boxes, and we'll, we'll do it fresh. Speed this bit up. Okay, they got less good as they went through. Anyway, we need to think about how we're going to implement binary search, right? We're looking for some number, let's say it's X, in this list. And we don't want to open the first one and then the second one. That's linear search. We want to divide and conquer. We want to go halfway. Now, the first iteration will be quite easy. We just take the length of this list divided by two. But actually, we want a more general solution depending on which bit of this problem we're solving and how many iterations we've run already. So let's define a couple of variables. Let's say the left is the leftmost box we're considering, and the right is the rightmost box we're considering. And we initialize them at being the first element and the last element of, of our list or our array. So then we can calculate the midpoint, the first one we're going to look in, as m is equal to l plus r divided by 2, and then that might be, depending on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, it's actually, I think it's this one, no, it's not. It's, it's halfway between these two. If L plus R, does that mean L as in the number one? One plus... Three? Yeah, or zero, depending on whether your indexing is... Uh, is right, it depends. Right, you know, yes. see what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so but we, we, you know, in case, we don't want to arrive halfway between two elements, so we'll just do the floor function here. So we'll round down to the nearest integer, or we'll discard all the extra bits. And so we're going to end up, I think, here. Right? I'm not actually counting now, I'm just going to guess. So this is M. Now we open this box, or we look in the array, or we read the database entry, or whatever it is we're doing, and we find out that X is not equal to M, so we haven't finished, and we find out that X is bigger, which means that X must be in this region here if it's in this list at all. We also now know that this is not this, it's not these, it's not these, and it's not this one. And we also know it's not this one, because we just looked. And we haven't had to look at any of those, so we've saved a huge amount of time. So the next iteration, what we need to do is we need to move our left-hand side over to here, so that we're now looking in this region. So I'm going to change colour, controversial, uh, and I'm going to say, OK, L is now... Not there, excuse me, L is there. Nah, no, we've already looked at that one, we don't need to do that. So then R is, stays where it is, right? and then we create a new M, so we do M is equal to L plus R divided by 2, and that ends up here, so let's do our new M, and we look in this one and we say, oh, okay, X is actually smaller than this. So what we've done there is we've discarded this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we can now move new color, uh, fancy, right? Uh, L stays there, R moves to here, right? And we do L plus R divided by two, which is actually gonna mean that M is the same one here, right? Like this, I should have done that above. Um, and so we look in this one, and if M matches, then again, we're finished. If not, we're gonna to have to go this way, and so on. And what will happen eventually is you'll, you'll do this for however many items you have, and eventually L and R will swap places because you'll move one of them this way or something like this. If L is greater than R or something like that, then you're finished, right? And you haven't found it. Now, hopefully you do find it, but it depends on, <laughs> it depends on the problem. Um, so, you know, hopefully you can see this is much, much faster than, um, than doing a linear search. And actually, it's not very difficult to implement because you've just got L, you've got the array, you've got R and M. That's pretty much, oh, and X, that's it, right? There's only a few variables. There's actually only a few lines of code. So let's write that up in Python and see how it goes. All right, so let's look at this. I've just, I've just whipped up this algorithm. It's very, very straightforward. We have a function called binary search. Right? That's 
a success as far as I can tell. It takes a list, which I've called LST, and an A, which is our variable we're searching for. Right? So I've changed the name of the variable just to confuse matters. We set our left to be zero, because in Python, zero is the first element of an array, and we set the right to be the length of the array minus one, which is the last element of the array, and then we have our loop. So we basically say, okay, while L is smaller than or equal to R, or less than or equal to R, we're going to repeat. We're going to calculate our new M, which is L plus R divided by two. And here I've used the double slash to do an integer division. So basically it will automatically discard any fractional component. Then we say, okay, is A greater than the element M? in which case we set the left-hand side to be m plus 1. Or we say, okay, is a less than the element of m, in which case we set the right-hand side to be m minus 1. Or have we found the right number, in which case just re return true. Right? I'm not actually returning the number from the list, I'm just returning true or false. Right? And that's the entire, um, the entire function. If we get to the end and... There are, and, and L and R have swapped places, we just return false because the number wasn't in the array. Right? So let's have a go and see how much faster this is. So I'm going to run Python here. So I'm going to Python minus I bin.py, which is my function. Well, how big is the array you're looking at then? What well, I'm looking at an array that is not so big that my computer dies. That was what I was really aiming for. So I've chosen the array. Uh, uh, two billion? No, sorry, no. I think 100 million. I think 100 million is right. 2 billion might be pushing my laptop a bit far because there's a lot of overhead, um, you know, in the variables and things. And like, it just seems to be taking up quite a lot of RAM. Um, I'm not overly, overly confident. Uh, I think minus I uh, bin dot pi. Right, so we run this and now it's loaded up my function. So I can say uh, binary search and it will show me I've got a function there. So I can look at it. So now let's create a new list um, and a big one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to import NumPy because that's a good way of generating large lists of numbers. So import NumPy. Yes, NumP. It's a new list. LST is equal to NumPy.random.randint. So random integer. All right, let's not do decimals. Um, and how big do we want? How many random ints do we want and how what's the maximum value they can take? Well, let's make them two, they're somewhere between zero and two billion, right, in terms of the numbers. And let's say size is equal to 10 million, right? So 10 million. So that'll be an array of 10 million items that might be any number between, yeah, zero and two billion. Two billion, yeah. So there'll be a little bit of repetition, but not a lot, right? And will that come out sorted? Um, no. No. So um, let's, let, let's, let's, let's push it out a bit. Let's make it 100 million, right? One more, okay? Then I'm going to copy this to a list, right? There may be a better way of doing this. I, I don't know what it is. Um, this could take, this just take a little minute. It won't take as long to do this as it will to, to sort it, right? We, where we might actually go and get a coffee first. So now we're going to say LST is equal to sorted LST, right? And then we're going to have just, uh, just relax for a little bit because we've got, we've got some time to wait. Now, actually, this is quite an interesting point. Part of the interesting thing about binary search is that we're, we're assuming the data is already sorted. Now, sometimes that will not be the case. And sometimes sorting it is the real problem bit, you see. And so actually, I think one of the really interesting things about things like binary search is you didn't, shouldn't just use it all the time. You use it when you're doing more lookups than you are sorting. Right? So if you, you know, maybe you sort your data at the beginning of the day for some reason, and then you just do lots and lots of lookups throughout the day, it makes a lot of sense to do something like this. Right? Whereas if you only ever want to look up one value, you might as well just find it and, and not worry. You, you see what I mean? So I think actually it's, rather than just learning all these algorithms, I think it's just interesting as if you're going to be a software developer to think about when, just to be aware of when you should be using certain algorithms. Whether it's appropriate. Yeah, because, you know, there's a lot of people, oh, you know, can you program this kind of tree from scratch? Well, probably not, actually. I've forgotten how to do it. But what I can tell you is that, you know, when I'm using a hash set or a, a list, I know roughly which algorithm would be the most appropriate in terms of efficiency for a specific task. And I think that's a really helpful bit of knowledge to have because if you just use the default one, you'll often find it's quite slow, as we're about to find out. We're still sorting the list, by the way. To be fair, this is a lot of numbers. How much RAM am I using? Oh, it could be worse. It's only five gig. 
Um, but I couldn't, uh, that would be, that would suggest I couldn't multiply my data set size by another 10. Although, okay, sorted, that's good, right. So if we type len of list, right, it's 100 million, right, it's, it's, there's a lot of zeros here, I'm trying to, I think it's 100 million. We can, for example, select the millionth element to the millionth and tenth element, right? So we could say uh, list index from a million to, to there, right? So that's the, all, the, all the numbers in this array from a million to a million ten position. Um, and one of them is seventeen. Uh, Seventeen's not there. Would you believe? Um, now um, there will be a little bit of repetition in this array because some of the random numbers will have turned out the same. But we're not going to worry about that today. So if we want to find out whether a number is in this array, all we need to do in Python is use the in keyword. Right. So I could say is seventeen in LST, and we sit here for a bit while it looks for every single number and it's not going to be in there. False. Right? Now, why did that take so long? Right? Because, you know, 17 is going to appear right near the beginning. Right? Well, it's because Python doesn't know that this is a sorted list. Right? There's no reason for Python to know, so it has to use a generic algorithm like a linear search to solve this problem. Right? So if 17 had been in, it would have returned very, very quickly because it would have hit it right at the beginning, but it didn't. Right? So if I look at if I search for this number that I can already see is in the list, so if I say 1997267 in list, it returns almost immediately because it just goes a million in, finds it, stops. Right? So sometimes you get lucky with this, sometimes you don't. But if you're just using the in keyword and your list is very, very long, you're actually just doing a really inefficient linear search, right? So this is one of those times where you might think, okay, maybe this is a time when I need to find a slightly better algorithm to do this. So let's use our binary search and see if we can find some stuff in here. So for example, binary search. So now you're gonna use that script that you've written. Yeah, so I'm, I'm using the function I'm, I'm writing. I'm gonna pass it the list, I'm gonna pass it 17, and it immediately returns false because it's just gone like this, doing a binary search, it's taken um, log to base two of 10 million right, steps, right, which is 23, right? So 23 steps and it got there. Yeah, log to base two of, of, of 10 million is roughly 20, 22, 23 steps. So it will have got there. I mean, if you found a number on the first go, it might take fewer than that. But on, on, you know, in the worst case, it's 23 steps, whereas the worst case for finding 17 in this list of a linear search is 10 mi uh, million steps, right? Sorry, 100 million steps, right? 10 times worse. So it's really bad. So, you know, this is a really, really powerful algorithm that gets used all the time. And, and, you know, extensions of this where you have binary trees and you're searching through binary trees is a similar principle. And the idea is that you've structured your data in such a way, like we've sorted it here, that you can zero in on your target much, much more quickly. And so it's really, really useful. What, what I can't stand about this is, is why is there a green pen all over my hand? Like, have you got like a video of me just penning my own hand? Because that's, yeah. every time I finish a computer file, I've drawn all over myself and I don't understand when in the video I've done this. But anyway, it's, it's, <laughs> that's a, a, a small aside.